All right, let's talk about the TikTok ban. In this video, we'll cover what it is, why this is happening, and what this means for the future of TikTok. So what is this ban? The government finally passed the TikTok ban after trying for several years. Effectively, it tells TikTok's parent company ByteDance that it has to sell TikTok within nine months. And there's an option to extend that by an additional three months as well. Now, TikTok is worth definitely in the tens of billions of dollars at least. And some of the big players that you might think of that even has the cash to buy TikTok like Facebook and Google will probably not be allowed due to concerns of monopolies. That doesn't leave many options on the table. And if TikTok cannot be sold within that time period, it will be banned. Now, as of this recording on May 1st, if I still go to the app store, TikTok is there. But after that ban, it would mean that TikTok has to come off of the app stores. You won't be able to download any new updated versions of the app and the website also cannot be updated. So it will just bleed out and suffer a miserable slow death. And this is fascinating because this is really the first time in history something like this has happened. The US government has been trying to ban Chinese made products recently due to concerns that they might be spying on us. But this is the first time in history that it is banning such a popular app. So let's talk about why is this ban even happening? The only face data that you get that we collect is when you use the filters to have say sunglasses on your face, we need to know where your eyes are. And Why do you need to know what the eyes are if you're not seeing if they're dilated? And, and that data is stored on your local device and deleted after use if you use it for facial. Again, we do not collect body, face, or voice data to identify our users. Very simply put, the American government is afraid that TikTok can be used as a propaganda tool. Because as you may know, TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a Chinese company. Now, let's take a hypothetical example. America has certain political reasons to support Taiwan, but China thinks that Taiwan should be part of its own country. America has an obligation to support Taiwan, and if there was some movement in the American government to help Taiwan, maybe the Chinese government can send pro-unification videos to young people's feeds on TikTok to convince Congress not to help Taiwan. Now that is some next level 4D chess happening there. But similar examples have already happened. The ongoing conflict that's happening in Israel and Palestine, there have been a lot more pro-Palestinian videos that have gone viral versus pro-Israel videos. Lawmakers saw that as evidence that it could be used as propaganda. But they have even more evidence. When news of this bill to ban TikTok finally was announced, when TikTok users opened up their apps, they were urged to contact their Congress member to oppose the bill. That effort ended up backfiring because that that was a smoking gun that lawmakers were looking for, an actual concerted effort to influence politics in America, giving them solid evidence that TikTok can be used as a propaganda tool. And so the bill passed, and now America has sent this ultimatum to TikTok. But still, a lot of things can happen. For one, if the Chinese government steps in and prevents the sale from happening, then the American lawmakers would feel very vindicated that their fears were true. Or maybe the Chinese government doesn't prevent the sale completely, but they sell the app without the algorithm. That's the magic that makes TikTok TikTok. And in that scenario, the American government might also feel like a little vindicated, but the sale of this transaction would be unprecedented because it is across borders, it is such a massive app, and there has been no sale transaction like this ever in history. So what does this mean for the future of TikTok? They really need to see new ownership and a severing, a complete severing of ties with China. Well, the CEO of TikTok has said that he will challenge this as far as he can in the American court system because he says that TikTok just reflects American values, especially the First Amendment. But the government is stepping in with the only thing that can block the First Amendment, which is national security. And if we've seen anything about America, they will literally do anything in the name of national security. And people predict that as they fight through this in the courts, it will go to the Supreme Court. On the one hand, you have one of the most important American values, national security. And on the other hand, you have one of the most 
important American values, the First Amendment. It's number one for a reason. Yeah, I, I have no idea how that's gonna play out. This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. And I find this case to be so interesting because it feels like a 21st century skirmish of the Cold War. You got China versus America, but it's also a battle of technology. And I think this is fascinating that American lawmakers are stepping in now for two reasons. Number one, this is what America does regularly to other countries. And number two, there are also homegrown American propaganda tools, but they didn't do anything for that. But when it is a foreign propaganda tool, now they're much more concerned. So let's break it down. The first point is that America does this regularly to other countries. We have evidence of other countries using American propaganda tools, mainly Facebook, and how it could wreak havoc in other countries around the world. Most famously, the Myanmar genocide. This is a very well-documented event where people in Myanmar were using Facebook to spread propaganda like wildfire to incite genocide. But Myanmar is a small country. They could never dare Facebook or the US government to sell Facebook to a Myanmar tech company. That's absurd. But that's exactly what we're asking of TikTok. And sorry, Facebook, you're in the spotlight again. But in the 2016 election, Russia used Facebook as a tool to spread propaganda and influence our election. But lawmakers at that time didn't do anything. We've seen versions of this happening even on our own soil. And so I get that if there's a chance that this could happen again with not our own tools, but a foreign country's tool, then that has crossed enough lines where the American government feels that it needs to take action. If they can do anything preemptively to prevent a foreign government from influencing our domestic affairs, then yeah, we have to do something. So when it is a foreign company playing our hand better than we can even do it, well, yeah, then we got to put a stop to that, right? Honestly, I think America is a little jealous that they made a better app than we could because social media apps was kind of like Hollywood. It felt like they had run out of good ideas and it was getting very stale. And then when TikTok came and just lit a fire under all these tech companies' butts, you already know all the clones that popped up. Realistically, as this goes to the Supreme Court, probably inevitably, I think the courts are going to ban TikTok. I mean, they have a proven track record of making the least popular decisions lately, and that will go down as the less popular option. I think people want TikTok to stick around. I don't have much hopes that the courts are going to help us out. And down the line, I think this will lead to the inevitable fracturing of the internet. When the internet was first born, it was this awesome concept where anyone can take anything and you can go and speak to each other and learn about ideas that were new to you. But as the internet gets more mature, we're seeing that there are gatekeepers to this. There's going to be the American internet and there's going to be the Chinese internet. Already this is happening. If you go to China, you cannot access American sites. They have Chinese versions of those very same sites. And so more and more, they're going to control their ecosystem and America is going to block out the Chinese sites and we're just going to grow up with different internets. The TikToks have got to go. The orange ones are the only ones that taste good, and when I drop the little box, they go clickety-clack, and everybody stares at me at the matinee. No more TikToks! When I used to go to Europe, a lot of my European friends used to say, I don't have Facebook or Instagram because I don't want Facebook to have my data. I never really understood what that felt like. Because as an American citizen, this is an American company, and they're not gonna screw us over with that data, right? But now with TikTok, I kind of understand what my European friends were saying. And look, maybe this is a good thing. TikTok is the closest equivalent to junk food, tech digital junk food that I have ever experienced. It's so fun, it's so engaging, it's so time consuming. And at the end of it all, I just want more and more and more. But when it's all said and done, I just feel a little bit bloated, no? Maybe I could have used that time a little bit better. And so, like so many things in 2024, who knows what will happen? Will interest rates go up or down? Which tech company is gonna lay off their employees next? How much hotter is the earth gonna get this year? And in an epic rematch between a giant douche and a turd sandwich, who will win? It's anybody's guess. 
But whatever happens, I hope that we will always have some kind of a platform where we can voice our opinions. It just probably won't be owned by China. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the impending TikTok ban. What do you think about the American clones of TikTok? Honestly, if TikTok disappeared tomorrow, it wouldn't be the end of the world. There's already alternatives out there. Do you guys use YouTube shorts or reels? I think they're getting pretty popular, right? Let me know. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.